listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Welcome back to the program, Mom. Zev Brenner, I know many of you are thinking Hanukkah, and we should be thinking Hanukkah, but you do also know that Hanukkah is the beginning of the Passover vacation season when people book their Pesach vacations. And Donnie Schwartz is an expert. They, he's heads of PassoverListing.com, where they list almost every single Pesach program in the world and look at the good to the bad. But there are people who've been fleeced, people who've had problems. And instead of going on vacation, it was a nightmare going. So we're going to look at some of the things to look out for when you're looking for a Pesach vacation. Donnie, welcome back to the program. Thank you for joining us again. Thanks for having me, Zev. Donnie, thank you for joining us again. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So you know all things Pesach. I know people are looking to light the menorah, but people are already thinking about warm spots and vacation other parts of the world. First of all, have we rebounded from COVID? Are there an abundance of Passover programs this year, or is it more limited? You know, it's it's. I think we rebounded from COVID. That's that's the good news, right? I think people are kind of past it, right? They're traveling. We're seeing a lot of more kosher traveler, you know, programs and operations going on, which is great. You know, I mean, you know, even for Hanukkah or for Yeshiva Week, that's amazing. Um, but I think to your point, there are a lot less Pesach programs this year for one reason or another. Part of it has to do with just the hotels, you know, just giving you know some issues over there, and just part of it has to do with uh, the price of food and operations and inflation going up. So I think we're we're seeing a less for different less variety of programs for different reasons. But I think to your point, I mean, COVID, we're thankfully we're past it and people are ready to go and ready to have a good time. So if I had to ask you, Donnie, what is the number one Pesach destination for this coming? I know it's early to tell, but what would you say it is? You know, a lot of people are going to Europe. A lot of people are going to Mexico. And, you know, a lot of people are trying to stay within the U.S. for, for various reasons. I think destination wise, there's always a lot of hot destinations out there. Uh, there's a lot of new destinations, whether it be like Dubai, uh, Turkey, Thailand. You know, there's a lot of really cool destinations out there. Um, and obviously you got the regulars, you know, you got Florida, you got Mexico. You got you got a couple really nice programs in, in Cancun. Um, and Puerto Vallarta this year, you got to, again, you know, the regular folks, uh, and, and, you know, always good options in Florida. And then you got some new programs coming out, you know, in Utah, for example, a nice program for, for action packed, you know, cave diving and, and things of that nature. So, you know, you always look at the programs as, are you looking for like a nice beachy vibe and you want to just sit back on uh, a lounge chair and, and relax in hot weather, or do you want like, an adventure, right? Do you want touring? Do you want excursions, right? Things of that nature. Um, so it really depends on what you're looking for. I always say there's, there's no one best destination, one best program. It really depends on what your requirements are, what your budget is, and where you're looking to go, whether you want to stay local or you want to really go across the pond. Now, one of the, I think, has the largest amount of people going for Pesach vacation is Orlando. I've heard numbers could be close to 200,000. I don't know if that's correct. And I've heard these crazy kinds of numbers. So uh, is that correct? And is that still so popular this year? Because people can rent the house and it's cheaper than getting into a hotel and you get the food delivered to you. You know, it seems it seems a little high, right? I mean, you know, on a given year, there's roughly 150,000 people going away for Pesach, roughly. Uh, you know, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. So 100,000 in Orlando seems a bit high, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, there's a lot of really good programs in Orlando. And, this, you know, what's what's popular right now in Orlando, a lot of people like the houses, a lot of people like getting those villas, a lot of people like uh, um, doing some, some of them like doing their own thing as opposed to going to a full-blown program. So, you know, Orlando would be a good option for that. Um, but 100,000 people, you know, it seems a bit high. Seems a bit high, but I wouldn't think a bit high. I mean, a lot of people go there, but do we have any idea what the numbers are? In, in Orlando, uh, I would say uh, it's a good, great question. I mean, like I said, one hundred fifty thousand people go away. You know, right? That's which is which a lot of people going away. Now, people did go to Orlando. It was a problem which we covered a number of years ago, where people did go away for 
um, you know, for Pesach and they booked an Orlando villa and they end up coming out for Pesach. And guess what? Somebody else had the villa. Remember that story, Adani? Okay. Adani, are you there? Okay, where we are reconnecting with Donnie Schwartz, we are looking at Pesach vacations, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the fantastic, and not so fantastic as well. And uh, we are uh, obviously going to take your phone calls as well during the course okay. of this. So go ahead, Donnie, you were saying. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of European programs this year all over, all around the world. So I think, I think we could definitely hit numbers even, even higher than that, right? You know, there's a lot of programs in Italy of saying Greece, Morocco, Spain, uh, you know, all over uh, yeah, Thailand, Turkey, etc. So it's going to be a big, uh, really a big undertaking this year. And I think um, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. So it's going to be a lot of really good options all around the world for people to go. So I think the numbers are going to be high. And I think, you know, frankly, right now, Zev, I mean, programs are booking out. Um, a lot of the programs are 50 to 75 percent booked already across I the board. That. So, I talked to some operators and I can't believe it's not even Hanukkah time and people have already <laughs> booked for Pesach, you know, which is yeah. amazing. But what I started to ask you before in Orlando, and it's a very popular destination spot, but there was about two or three years ago, maybe it was right before COVID, where people booked villas that come, come out there for Pesach and they discover that somebody else has the villa that was double booked and triple booked in some cases. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. Resolved or could it happen again? Yeah, no, no I, think, I think that problem's been resolved. I mean, yeah, I heard that too. I heard that was a little craziness, you know, with a lot of people, you know, they were going, it was kind of like that fire festival, you know, program where you go and you're like, you show up and everything's just changed around. So I think they kind of got it. I think people are also a little bit more hesitant. I think that's also the reason why some of them are, are kind of gearing more towards the programs and the hotels versus kind of doing their own thing per se. As you know, some of the times, you know, you get more bang for your buck if you're kind of going to a program, you're enjoying entertainment, you're enjoying the um, the programming, the food, the, you know, everything's kind of taken care of for you versus having everything to do yourself. Um, but there's benefits, there's pros and cons, I always say. You know, every year, you know, the reason why we we do what we do at Passover Listings is because, you know, we ourselves, you know, we're, we were avid Passover program travelers, right? And every year, um, you know, in the past, right, we, you know, sometimes you experience uh, you know, the not so good things sometimes on, on programs, you know, with, with things of that nature. And I went, I had a, you know, uh, one negative experience over the many years I've been going away. And that's why we have a review site to kind of, you know, in a forum for people to post, you know, how good is this programming or, you know, how, you know, do we, uh, do we like the food, right? Do we like the scholars and residents? Do we like, um, uh you know the location and the hotel right so there, there's a lot of you know you really want to kind of hear it from the people who have really been on the programs and i think that's kind of the key here it's 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 you know you, you don't want to have you're spending a lot of money right some some upwards of tens of thousands of dollars yeah you want to make sure you're you're having the best time possible right when you go away no absolutely but now you mentioned that that you can have less problems with hotels but there have been some situations where people have gone to a hotel and had a problem. I believe it was Cancun, uh, where a number of years ago, where where they pay the operator and then the night before the operator left the hotel, yeah, people they, they had to pay again because there were armed guards that wouldn't let them leave the hotel. They wouldn't let them leave. Yeah, I know somebody that was on that program. Yeah, no, that was that was a crazy crazy story. Let me tell you. And you know the funny thing is, I mean that's that's the reason why people come to passoverlistenings.com and passover program reviews on Facebook because you don't want to have those stories happen to you, right? You know, I mean, to, to really be kind of, I remember that story in, in Mexico, Zev, where, um, you know, people couldn't leave. Uh, it was crazy, you know, it, it was it was nuts. So, you know, you, you really have to know who's operating these programs. You have to know, um, uh, you know, what they've done in the past and what the plan is in the future, right? And that's kind of like what we have, what we have here and why it's so important. So, um, but you hear that, look, thankfully, you know, thank God, right? It's, it's really minimal, right? When you say these, you know, when we're bringing up these stories, there's, there's a, on a given year, there's over a hundred Pesach programs that happens maybe, you know, 
one every couple of years, probably, and probably one program, right? So you're not really hearing those those types of stories all, all across the board. You know, and I think, frankly, um, you know, the pace off program industry is, is is getting better. You know, they're improving, they're, they're, they're kind of uh, bringing it to new heights. There's a lot of really, really new uh, protocols in place and new programming in place. So I think all in all, it's, it's going to be a, a really good year for the programs. And I think it's going to be a really good year for, for travelers and customers going away on these programs. It's be a lot of fun. But there's also another situation where the operator is not looking to fleece uh, the patrons of the program, but sometimes they think they're going to have a big crowd and comes a week before Pesach, two weeks before Pesach, they cancel the program and people get <laughs> stuck. So how do we, and, and some of them have been longtime operators where they've operated for many years and all of a sudden, boof, they're no longer yeah. operating. So how does one protect themselves and in your research and you have the biggest <laughs> listing of Passover retreats where people can go, how do you, how do you flag this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think there's two really, really good ways to, to flag this and kind of make sure that doesn't happen to you, right? Because you never know, right? The, this can happen to anybody. Um, I think number one, you know, is travel insurance, right? Make sure you get travel insurance. We actually have on PassoverListings.com a really good travel insurance operator called Travel Defend on our, um, on our website. All the entire, the majority of the Passover uh, customer industry uses uses them and use uses because they're they're a very widely known operator. Um, so I think travel insurance is great. That's number one. Zeb. I think another thing is is you know look in the fine print of your contract, right, and make sure um, you know you're comfortable in terms of what you're signing up for and agreeing to in terms of deposits and in terms of payments, right? Making sure that you know if someone closes down and cancels that you're able to get your money back, right? That's that's really the crux of it making sure that, you know, you're, you're always having, it's always in the fine print. And I could tell you, you know, programs, especially the big ones, the small ones, the programs, they're also making sure that they're abiding by this for the customer side, right? So um, they're able to, you know, give back mo appropriate monies if, God forbid, something happens um, and they have to cancel the program. So I would, you know, those are really the two biggest things in my mind outside reading reviews on pay stop programs, right? and making sure you're talking to the right people who've actually been on the program in the past, right? So those are the two big things, travel insurance, and frankly, just uh, making sure you're, you're reading your contracts. And I would say there were certain operators during the COVID time where they had to cancel the program, they refunded the deposits to people that went, those are the programs that you know you can rely on. Yeah, I mean, that, you, you brought up the best point. I mean, you know, we did this two years ago, right? You know, where, it was a kind of a testimony to like the programs in terms of they look, they, these guys got fleeced too. Let me tell you, I mean, you know, they got, they lost a lot of money, all these operators. Don't get me wrong. This is their part also all year around. And, you know, a lot of it, you know, um, really wasn't, wasn't their, you know, fault. Um, but they did, you know, a lot of the programs, you know, I'd say many, many, many programs did very well by their customers, whether it be paying back in full, paying back a portion or crediting, you know, crediting a lot of a lot of the customers, which was key. And so, you know, that trust is still there. Thank God. You know, I mean, look, we could have seen Zev, this program industry pace that kind of go downhill very, very quickly if if uh, a lot of them, uh, you know, ran. But I, I think, you know, we saw two years ago and continuously, I know program operators, frankly, still paying customers back today as we speak. So, um, it's a really good, you know, these guys know what they have and they, they have thankfully a good product and a good program and, and they want to do good by people. You know, that's the key. And, and, you know, and thankfully the customers are seeing that. That's so important. Donnie Schwartz is our guest and he, he's, he, he's, I should say he's written the book, but he's written the website, uh, dealing with anything Pesach you want to know, go to PassoverListings.com. In fact, you're giving away a free pace vacation, right? We are. Yeah, we are. We, we really, you know, I think we, we really wanted to, first off, give give a, a free pace off vacation to one lucky couple out there. And thankfully, you know, we have access to do so on our side. So, um, yeah, you know, if you visit PassoverListings.com or if you go to our Facebook group called Passover Program Reviews, which has 8,000, over 8,000 people at this point, um, you can take a look and just, you know, submit your name into the contest and uh, we're looking to actually at the end of this month, 
uh, you know, announce the winner. So it's really easy. You don't have to do much for it. And it's, uh, you can win, uh, over a $14,000, I think it's close to maybe like $18,000 value to wow. go away for free. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? So it's go to pastorlistings.com and register. That's all you have to do. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Remember, PassoverListings.com if you want to get a free pace of vacation. It's a great program. Which which operator are you using for it? Are you able to say? We're going to be giving... Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we're going to be giving it away at Leisure Time Tours. Leisure Time oh, he's Tours. a great is, operator. Yeah, I mean, been around for, you know, 30, 40 years. Uh, it's, it's it's going to be an amazing, amazing program there. Um, you know, and and uh, again, you know, they're, they're one of the, the top programs, you know, around the world. Certainly is. If you like to win a free pace of vacation, go to passoverlistings.com and register. But don't wait to the last moment because if you want to get a free vacation, I think the deadline's coming up. So just go to passoverlistings.com. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. You're listening to the talk line. On the air since 1981. Now, here's your host. Welcome back to the program. I'm um, Zev Brenner. Donnie Schwartz is our guest for a little while longer. He's, I was going to say write the book, but he wrote the website about Pesach, PassoverListings.com, PassoverListings.com. And uh, we're taking some of your phone calls. Let's go to Jean and the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Jean, are you, are you there? Yep. Uh, yes, we're here. You have a My question? Brother Herman is here too. Okay, you have a question for our guest? Yes. Uh, you said that Rabbi, that you're having a vacation plan for Passover. Will any of that plan, including going to Masada and going down the mountain there to Ein Gedi or other archaeological digs and finds that have been expanded since I was there when I was 22 years old? Okay, I'm going to let uh, Donnie respond. You have to lower your rate just a little bit. Go ahead, Donnie. Yeah, yeah. So you're talking about Israel programs, right? So there's actually a handful of Israel programs this year. Um, so definitely take a look at PassoverListings.com. Um, we have a bunch of programs listed there. I think one that comes to mind in terms of excursions to Engedi and Masada, um, you can take a look at Pesach Israel. It's one option. Um, there's, there's Lenny Davidsman. There's another option over there. And there's, there's a variety. Uh, the good thing about excursions in general, most of them, even if they're not including it in the vacation, in a Passover vacation, one thing you should be aware of, Gene, is that um, you can always work with the operators of the of the program or hotel to get you the excursions and the trips that you want to take. So if you're going to Israel and let's say they're not offering or included in the package, um, those operators, like, you know, for example, I know, you know, Benji from Pesach Israel, he'll be happy to help you find um, a tour that takes you to uh, Engedi or uh, Masada. So, uh, you know, I don't think you have any worries there. Anyway, thank you for your phone call. Let's go to Shlomo Manhattan. Go ahead, your question or comment for our guests. Go ahead, Shlomo. Shlomo, are you there? Okay, we will get the Shlomo back uh, on the air as well. So what's the most exotic place to go for Pesa this year? So this year, you know, um, there's uh, exotic, I feel like turkeys, turkeys are a really nice option, you know, with Vered tours, Vered's, uh, you know, a turkey, that could be a nice option, Zeb. I think um, you got a bunch of nice programs in Mexico, which are going to be exotic, you know, VIP kosher tours, a new program coming out, uh, 16 kosher restaurants, right, waiter service on the beach, that can be really nice, you know, in Cancun, Playa del Carmen, which you also have Diamond Club and Royal Passover, over there as well as great options in uh, Playa del Carmen and Cabo. Um, and then you also have Hapi Com, which is also a beautiful program in Puerto Vallarta. That's going to be nice exotic. So I think the Mexico program is going to be really nice this year. I think they're going to be great weather, great price. Um, and they also have a lot of really nice entertainment. A lot of the big uh, entertainers are also going to be in Mexico this year, whether it be Modi, Leo Suchar, God Elbaz, um, uh, Ishai Rebo, right? You got you got a lot of the folks that are going to be going down to Mexico uh, to really perform. So those, that's that's I think that's going to be a nice nice program. And then, yeah, of course, you know, exotic. I mean, I'm going to Florida this year. I'm going to be heading over to Lasco Getaway. So I think that's that's going to be a nice program this year in uh, Aventura at the Turnberry Hotel. So really excited about uh, about Lasco, and I, you know, I think there's a lot of others um, out there as well. Okay, let's go to Manhattan. 
And uh, we have Avram in Manhattan, the patient waiting by. Uh, thank you, Avram. Go ahead, uh, Shlomo. So Avram, Shlomo, you were, go your question for our guests. Go ahead, Shlomo. Yes, I wanted to know why uh, why I see all these advertisements for programs, and they don't uh, they don't have the uh, the kosher the kosher who the kosher supervision number of them don't have the kosher supervision on it. That uh, I've I've worked I've worked with uh, ten programs as a mashkiach and other things. It's I think it's very important to have a high standard at the Passover that they that they do that i don't want to talk about what i've seen because it's, it's uh, but but uh, in other words who is responsible for that? that's why the ou has has, has not made uh, pro probes because it's a very difficult thing especially for the first day on to the second second yeah. where i even told the caterer you have to put some of the food out if you cook on the first day you have to put it out it's very difficult uh for uh to, to maintain standards so you need really Yerish Shemaim, people who fear God, who are running yeah. the, uh, the rabbis in charge. So, okay, we, we get your point. I'm going to let Donny respond. Yeah. But he may yeah, yeah, no, hey, hey, hey. be more supervision in the end. People want to know who the supervision is. Yeah, Shlomo. So it's a great, it's a really, really, you know, fantastic point. I, and I, I hear you. And actually, it's one of the things that actually we really focus on because I think on, you know, if you go to PassoverListings.com, one of the biggest things is Hashkacha. You know, what does every program have in terms of hashgacha? What is their hashgacha? And I can tell you, there's so many instances actually where the OU reaches out to us to make sure, right, that if they're going to be listing a hashgacha that they put up there, that it, that, is, that is a legitimate number one hashgacha, but also that it actually fits what they're, they're actually going to be certifying this program. So it's one of the, by the way, the one of the most crucial, crucial pieces that these program operators make sure of, because when I speak, I speak to probably... 75 to 100 Passover travelers every week. And I could tell you one of the biggest things they always ask me is like, what is the Hashgacha? Well, who's certifying it? So I think um, it's an important piece. And, uh, you know, I can't answer why they don't put it in advertisement. I mean, I could tell you from an advertising perspective, um, you know, there's only so much text you can put on a page. But in terms of website, I guarantee you, you know, every everyone's of, of their program's website has the Hashgacha, has it certified, and we always advertise it as well on our website. As so well. people should go to PassoverListen.com. They can find the Hashgacha, the certification for PESA. Yep. That answer your question? That answer your question? No. Okay, th yeah, okay, thank it's you so much for your call and phone call. We appreciate that. Okay. Um, what would you say is local people don't like to fly so much anymore are there a lot of local programs this year so there's more local programs on the east coast than the west coast right so a lot of the west coast programs they've uh um you yeah, know there's not as many this year there's a couple in in california uh two nice ones uh in california that are uh you know redondo beach um and uh um another one you know close to san diego um and then you also have um uh utah on the west coast you have um atlanta on the east you know east coast eastern border and you got a bunch in florida new york new jersey poconos catskills bunch a bunch over there right so if you want to go local you can go local if you want to go to canada there's a nice program in canada this year as well um but local wise i'd say you know more many of them are on the east coast and uh, a lot of them have uh uh, some some of them have have closed down, unfortunately, the ones on the East Coast. But there's still a lot in Florida, a lot in New Jersey, New York, you know, the tri-state area, along with Atlanta. So, that's what Avraham in Kensington. Thank you for one. your question for our guest. Go ahead, Avraham. Yeah, Shavuot. It's an observation or a caution. Uh, it's one thing to it's one thing to um, get financial restitution if the uh, program goes belly up, but I don't want to trample on any particular operator's parnoso. But imagine, if you will, that they advertise for the first time ever, you can come to Antarctica for Pesach, and the check-in time is only four hours before Yontif. Um, a good general always has a plan B. A person who books a, a um, Pesach program, even if the Pesach program goes haywire in, in the area where there are many hotels, it's not so easy to find a replacement room. Uh, at a different hotel. So, Allah has come over Kamo. If a person books an exotic location, he may be painting himself into a corner, which he from which he has no escape. Should the program fail shortly before Yom Tov? Good, good question, Donnie. 
Yeah, so so sorry, just to summarize, is your question more of what do you do in that scenario if if you're um if the program doesn't happen or what what's the just to make sure I understand I the question. What, 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 what protection does a consumer have? He hung up. Yeah. What protection does a consumer have? And yeah. by the way, a good operator if they go out of business will make a provision with some other but I know operators that have done that. Yeah. Not everybody yeah, does. Yeah, so so I can tell you a lot of that, look, this is a small community, right? So the program operators talk to one another, right? You know, I can tell you this year, you know, for the for the programs are not happening, there's a lot of partnerships happening amongst programs, right? So if a part if a program goes out of you know business, God, God forbid, or cancels right before, you know, there's always options to, you know, the program that a lot of programs give and offer to kind of, you know, put their their folks at maybe another hotel that another program is operating, or at a minimum, right, they'll give, you know, a refund credit, et cetera, like whatever, again, is in the contract as we discussed earlier. So, you know, I don't, I don't think that's a major, frankly, concern um, because especially with the, the ones that have been around for a long time, right, they have a good operation going and there's always opportunity to move to another program if they have a relationship with that. I think what he was saying, if you're in Antarctica, you're the only kosher program there. So then you're stuck if they go out of business because especially- yeah. No, the- right. So like I said earlier, I mean, yeah, look, if you're, if you're right, if you're booking it and are going to go out of business, right, the, the only option there, again, is, is to, again, get a refund uh, or get a credit at a minimum and and uh, and see if you can book another program ASAP if you want to go away for Pesach. Right. Uh, but it's always a challenge. Um, sure. How many, on average, how many programs go out of business right before Pesach or a couple of weeks or a month before Pesach that started? Do we have any statistics, any numbers about that? So in the, in, look, in the many years that we've been doing this and working with, with all these programs around the world, um, you know, there's less, less than 1%, you know, go, go, go out of business, right. Maybe even less than, you know, a half a percent or, you know, 0.01%, you know, go out of business the right, right before I'll tell you why. Okay. Remember, you know, a week, a m- months before the program begins, these programs have to put down deposits on the hotel. They have to put, put deposits on the, the catering and the food, okay? They're not going to go out of business if they're already giving deposits, right, to these to the, the food companies and, and to, to buy food and to, you know, to put down the hotel. That's not going to happen, right? What typically happens if, it go, if, if they're, you know, going out of business or if they're kind of canceling, they'll cancel months in advance, knowing that they're, you know, they're, there's going to be too many issues, right, with one thing or another. So that's really the crux of of, of this, right, uh, in, the, in the sense of, right, the, again, the only time we're prone to cancel was COVID, right, when we were hit in March, right, and then the next month, programs just, you know, obviously we had to cancel every program across the board. I mean, that was the worst year ever for everybody. Um, but I, again, you know, I don't see anything happening literally a day, a week before, you know, most of this, the cancellation, at least in statistic wise, Ev, this has happened months in advance. It's not something that happens, you know, any, any time near Pesach. Um, what would you say is the price range for Pesach? Right? With inflation, I think price has probably gone up. So how does that affect the industry this year? Yeah, so everyone should know, right? Everyone should know that prices definitely have gone up for programs, right? Uh, they've gone up at least 10%, I mean, in some cases, 20%, right? Food costs gone up, supply costs gone up, you know, uh, uh, service costs got up. Um, so everything, uh, you know, has risen. You know, the programs out there, I mean, you can find the program for $6,500 for two adults in one standard room, and you could find the program that costs twenty thousand dollars for two adults in one standard room, right? So it really arranges from sixty five hundred. Yeah, actually, there's, there's some programs even advertising a little less than sixty five hundred, and then you get it all the way down twenty thousand. This is just for a standard room, right? Obviously, if you're buying a suite or a junior suite, it can get even more expensive. But this is for two adults. I'm kind of doing a apples to apples comparison. Two adults in one standard room. That's what that typically costs across the board. Of course, it depends on where you go. Um, you know, more expensive versus less expensive. And of course, you know, there's different things that these programs, you know, offer. Um, but that's that's really the price range over there, right? In terms of what you're what you're looking for. We we try to publish um, all the prices for all the programs on our website. So a lot of the, one of the major reasons outside, you know, the over a thousand reviews that we have across our forums and um, 
uh, website, uh, we always try to be transparent and try to give everybody the, you know, what, what these things cost. Because the number two questions we have is, what does it cost? And is it is it a good program? Those are the two questions we always get. You're on, I don't, Zev, I don't hear you right now. If you, well, what's it like this year? The people who will go Israel. Let's look at Israel. Yeah. So, what's it like in terms of? Uh, Availabilities and programming. Yeah, yeah. Israel, a lot, a lot, a lot of programs in Israel this year happening, and a lot of people are going. You know, every year, um, a lot of people go to Europe, a lot of people go to Israel, a lot of people go to Dubai, um, and you know, there's a lot of programs, nice programs in Israel, right? Um, I'd say the, the majority of people, yeah, you know, there's there's a ton of Europeans going to Israel. There's a bunch of programs in Israel this year. Um, you know, all around, right? So if, if you want to, in, in your Shalayim, Herzliya, right? Um, all, all over. Nice place to go. Let's go to Josh in Jerusalem. Josh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you so Good. much for having you, me. Thank you. Listen uh, to us I online. Just, uh, thank you for listening online. Go ahead, your question for our guests. Yes, my question is very simple. The, the, the Torah is very explicit that there is one place in the world three times a year Jews are supposed to go to, and that is to Jerusalem, to Eretz Israel. Why is there such an emphasis, or why isn't there an emphasis on bringing Jews home to Eretz Israel and not to all other places in the world? Thank you. Okay, good question. It's a great question. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you, know, um, you know, it's a great question. I think, look, everyone loves to go to Israel. You know, I would love to go to Israel, but... Um, Israel, going to Israel, especially if you're United States, it's expensive. You, know, you have to pay for flights. You got to pay for your kids' flights, right? And everything like that. So I think, you know, getting to Israel is also difficult, more difficult in the U.S., of course, in Mexico and Canada than it is in Europe, right? So I think, you know, in Europe, you know, and, and we see that. I mean, you know, in Europe, um, there's a lot of people going away to Israel, whether it be getting their own apartments or going on programs and even the Israel folks, you know, they're, they're going, you know, to the Israeli programs as well. So I think we're seeing a lot of that, but I think it comes down to price, you know, frankly, and, you know, these programs are expensive and the, uh, the price of flights, frankly, these days are also very, very expensive. So flights are always even going, frankly, from U.S., you know, New York to Mexico is expensive. So imagine going from New York to Israel. So I think that's the kind of the, the biggest thing. But, you know, I agree with you. If we can all go to Israel, it'd be great. It's just, you know, more of a matter of uh coming down to dollars and cents i think in my mind yeah, thank you for listening and, and, and Jerusalem and online and yeah. yeah. network.com thank you for listening for that now listen there's a lot to talk about for pesach it's it's in the air and i guess people take months and months to make sure they get the right pace of vacation we hope people do passover listens can be a very good guide for you to find the right program and you list prices as well correct yeah, we list prices. We're even offering a service this year free of charge to the consumer. If you don't, you know, finding a pace up program Zev, is one of the most daunting tasks, Jewish <laughs> kosher tasks out there. Always, you know, everyone, everyone always reaches out to us directly, our staff. If you ever need any help or guidance or anything like that, you know, you reach out, you know, reach out to Passover listings. You can go on our Facebook group and reach out to us directly. We're happy to help you. Again, there's no cost to it. We're, we're you know, we've helped many, many people throughout the years. We're happy to help you find a program. So if you are looking for one, you can't find you know any options, reach out to us. We're happy to help. Let's give out, if you want to win the Pesach vacation, a free Pesach vacation, it's an $18,000 value. Leisure Time Tours, they're a terrific operator. They've been around for a long time. I've been in some of their programs. And Robert yeah. Brewster. And Bruce the, runs the a good food time. is good. The programming is good. The tea room is great. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yep. so if you want to win, it's PassoverListings.com. And just register. And you can be put in to win. How many how, about how many people would you expect to be in the contest? Do we have any idea? So we already have uh, we already have a couple couple thousand people enter already. You know, in a short period of time. So um, obviously, there's a lot of people that want to want to win. Um, we're closing it. Um, I think at the end of the month here. 
Um, and, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be out there for one lucky, lucky couple. We'll probably announce it. Uh, we will announce it, of course. So yeah, everyone knows and that, that, uh, these people won and it's going to be great. You know, it's, it's a nice thing. I think this is frankly, I think this is the, one of the first times this has ever happened. In fact, you know, in terms of giving away literally like a free program, um, to one lucky couple. So, um, it's exciting, you know, it's exciting for people to also have that, you know, hope. And, and I think, uh, you know, the fact that we can give it away, I think is, 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 uh, is a really good thing as well. So we're really excited. About and it. It's a small number. So you have more of a chance to win this than to win the lottery. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. You never know. Has to listen to if you want to win a free Pesach vacation, don't wait, do it now. I want to thank you, Danish Schwartz, uh, PassoverListings.com. You also have other listings where people can find out what's happening Jewishly, right? Yeah, yeah, all around the world. You know, if you want to go on a Yeshiva Week program or uh, a Sukkot program, Shavuot program, you can always check out, you know, our sister site called My Jewish Listings, which is uh, another site that has uh, Pesach programs along with every other program listed as well. Continued success. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Okay,